One of the most important theorems in this calculus course is the following that is called the main theorem of cal calculus. Well, why is it so important? Well, the main theorem of calculus describes the close relationship between differentiation techniques and integration techniques. So there's a close relation between integration and differentiation and they can be seen as inverse operations on certain domains of functions. And the nice thing about this close relationship between differentiation and integration is that we can actually find definite integrals by application of the first part of the main theorem of calculus and we arrive at the second part of the main theorem of calculus. So now I will describe what is the main theorem of calculus actually about. So suppose we have a continuous function on a closed interval. Then we may define the following function, which is depending on x, we may define the definite integral from a to x of ft dt. Well, this integral is, um, is well defined. And uh, you may look at g of x as the following. So we have the graph of a function f on the right hand side. So this is clearly a continuous function on a closed interval a, b. And now we just take the, the, the area enclosed by the graph of the function and the lines a in between a and x. So this is a surface, yeah, surface area g of x. Well, by varying x over the interval, we get, of course, a function. And uh, the first part of the main theorem of calculus says that g is a differentiable function on the open interval a, b. And moreover, if we take a derivative of this function, we get f back. So here it's clear the first part says if we have a continuous function f, we may construct, in fact, a primitive of this function. Yeah, since we defined g as a primitive of f. Well, the second part says that when we take an arbitrary primitive of the function f on a, b, then we may calculate the definite integral from a to b f t dt by evaluating the primitive capital F in B and subtract the value for the primitive in A. Yeah, so here F is an arbitrary primitive. So we may calculate definite integrals once we know a primitive of the function F. That's what part two says.